Many speakers have said this before, but uh, for me, the 75th um, anniversary of the United Nations is first of all a moment to reflect on how much has been achieved since the UN uh, and my own institution, the World Bank, were founded at the end of the devastating Second World War. Um, I think uh, uh, Prime Minister Raffarin has already pointed to the fact that in 1950, uh, around two thirds of the world's population were living below 1.9 dollars per day, and today the share is only about 10%, while the absolute number of poor people has fallen by over half from 1.6 billion to around 650 million people. Um, this is also the 40th anniversary of the World Bank Group's partnership with China, uh, uh, 2020, and I want to use the opportunity to highlight the huge contribution that China itself has made to the global progress that we've seen in the fight against poverty. Um, of course, most importantly, by reducing the number of poor within China, uh, but more recently also as a growing contributor uh, to uh, IDA, the World Bank's uh, development financing arm for, um, uh, for the low-income countries. The multilateral institutions have been an important anchor for the global collaboration that has made this progress possible. Um, as advocates, as platforms for discussion and exchange of ideas, as repositories of knowledge and as providers of long-term concessional development finance. Uh, the UN, the IMF, the MDBs have all made important contributions. Today, these contributions are needed more than ever. COVID-19 has plunged the world into the deepest recession since the end of the Second World War. Um, Henry, you mentioned our report. We estimate that 95% of the world's economies are expected to contract this year and growth, global growth will fall um, by an estimated 5.2%. This could bring more than 70 pe million people back uh, below the uh, $1.9 per day poverty line. And while the pandemic has affected rich and poor countries alike, the poor and vulnerable have been particularly hard hit by the lack of access to health services, loss of jobs and income, and the inability of many governments and developing countries for fiscal reasons to find the resources to expand social safety nets and support the economy as much as required. The pandemic has not just had global economic implications, it has also revealed once again how connected our economies and societies are. From global food markets to global value chains, from the concerted global efforts to improve treatment protocols and find a vaccine, to the provision of cross-border liquidity by central banks of major economies, the pandemic has demonstrated that our problems are shared and so must be the solutions. The multilateral institutions are leaning forward. The World Bank Group, for example, is expected to provide around $160 billion in financing to developing countries over the next 15 months, with more than half of this going to low-income countries. But let me close with three uh, more, um, uh, more open reflections on the multilateral system. Uh, the multilateral system can only be as strong as our member states and shareholders want it to be. So I want to f reflect on three issues in that regard, specific to uh, perhaps the situation in international financial institutions. First, for the international financial institutions, it's clear that the financial resources at our disposal are falling well short of what is required to achieve the sustainable development goals and to effectively mitigate against risks of crises, such as the one we're currently living through. Many see this as a challenge of relevance but I would argue it is also a reflection of the success of globalization that development does not rely on official financing alone. What we in the multilateral institutions need to learn to do more effectively is how to catalyze funding for sustainable development, how to turn our billions into the trillions that are needed to achieve the sustainable development goals. Second, um, with the emergence of new development players, the question of coordination an agreement on international standards for development cooperation becomes ever more important. The re-emergence of a debt crisis in many of the poorest countries is both a reflection of the shortcomings of such cooperation and the need for it going forward. Multilateralism should be about, a, uh, about uh, um, uh, the prevention uh, to, of repeating the mistakes of the past. 
And in that regard, um, we have made a lot of progress internationally to agree international social and environmental standards, um, uh, agreements on debt transparency, et cetera, uh, which are important to make sure that that development coordination happens. It would be desirable that the new development players find a way to also accept these standards and find a way to, uh, uh, to make their international development assistance more aligned with these standards. Third, as the center of economic gravity in the world is shifting to the developing countries, the question is how to reflect this in the structures of global governance. Greater voice and representation for development countries is desirable, just as we need to strive to make sure that our staff are more diverse. This diversity will enrich multilateralism, but it has to be based on a consensus on what development consists in, which is why I was referring to the standards in my earlier point. If we can agree on what good development means, what good development outcomes are, it should be easier also to make more space for the voices of the new emerging players in the multilateral system to be more clearly reflected. If, on the other hand, these uh, differences in opinion are not, uh, uh, are not resolved, uh, it will become more difficult to make uh, space for a more inclusive global governance. And so I would invite uh, the, the, the new emerging development players, including China, to engage on the discussion of what uh, global development should look like uh, and to reaffirm their commitment to the standards um, uh, if, uh, if indeed uh, they agree that these standards are the right ones to follow. I think in that regard, I'm optimistic that multilateralism is not only required uh, as a solution to our future development uh, problems, but will also be successful uh, in addressing them. Uh, with that, uh, let me close and uh, thank you again.